Hi, my name is Dr. Peter Cluso. I'm a psychologist. What you see here is not my practice. That one belongs to the famous Sigmund Freud in Vienna. Anyway, I have one of the best private practices in Manhattan. In fact, all of New York City, and my clients include the most famous and rich people in the world. I intentionally offer 20% of my time and service to those who are less fortunate, who are at the other end, or the poorest. I even mentor two individuals every year, paying for their rent and all their needs, giving them a chance to restore their lives. Now, this is about Bob. Bob is a patient of mine. Now, Bob is a very special person. You see, as you can see in this picture, he is a fashion model. In fact, he is the world's most famous male fashion model in his early 30s. But he looks like he's in his 20s. And most women consider him to be the sexiest man alive. They just love to get their hands on him. And Bob is desperate to have a relationship. He's lonely, but he has a big problem. Bob is an extreme hypochondriac. He has a terrible fear of germs, viruses, bacteria, diseases, getting ill, getting sick. And he has a terrible fear of dying, death. It's called thanatophobia. Well, anyway, this is about Bob. Hello. Dr. Kudazu, this is Lorraine from the Off Hours Call Service. Sorry to disturb you. Bob says he is a client and that he is really afraid that he is going to die at any moment. He wants you to call him immediately. Okay, thank you for calling. I need to turn on the lights. <laughs> this is uh, here. Hi, Bob. What's what's happening, Bob? Dr. Cluzo, thank thank you so much for taking my call. Um, I I I was at the supermarket, and and this woman, she dropped her purse by accident. And, and I was I was careless and forgot to put my glove back on. You know, I, I normally wear gloves when I'm uh, touching things. And, and I picked it up. I picked up her purse without the glove. And, and it had some yuck, some slime on it. And just a small amount. Anyway, the woman thanked me. And when she opened her mouth to speak, oh my God, I saw she had cavities, Doc. Doc cavities in her teeth. It could be a sign of some terrible disease. Maybe that's, you know, the slime has the bacteria or the, whatever the virus in it. it. Could be fatal, right? There's a real risk with slime. Uh, let's be honest, okay? So, 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 Dr. Cluzo, do you, do you think I'm really at risk of, of dying from, from my... Bob, you know I would never lie to you, right? I would never want to scare you. 
The slime could be anything. It could be harmless. And of course, it could also make us sick. It's okay, you know. But the chances are, you're going to be okay, Bob. I mean, listen, and, and by the way, lots, lots of women have cavities, you know? Lots of people have cavities. Oh, no, no, the back. I, I don't have cavities. No, not me. My teeth are, are perfect, and, and, and they're insured. The Eight million dollars, guy. So, Bob, I mean, of course, you've um, used that device that, uh, to check your vitals, um, the one that you had showed me last time, the portable device. So what does it say? Well, so sorry, Doc. I, I was kind of distracted right now. The fly so, somehow got right into my apartment. And, oh, there. It's gone. It's zapped. Yeah, I have this blue light zapper thing, you know? The, the, the thing that zaps bugs. It's gone. I, I think you were asking me about my vitals. So, so anything abnormal in your vitals? Right. Well, my vitals, um, well, yeah. My temperature looks like it's normal. Pulse, you know, regular. My blood pressure is slightly elevated, but I think it's well within limits. And my oxygen oximeter level reading is well. It's, yeah, I think it's good, 98%. Uh, actually good. And also my uh, radiation exposure. You know, I have a Geiger doctor. I told you about that. Yeah. Well, my Geiger counter says uh, I'm fine. No, no radiation from from the slime. But but I'm feeling a bit dizzy, doc. Dizzy, Bob. Um, did you, did you eat on time, Bob? Oh, shit. That's it. I forgot to eat. <laughs> I was, you know, I was so afraid of the slime incident at the supermarket that when I got home, I forgot to eat, Doc. So I'm going to eat now, Doc. Bob. Are you, are you feeling, are you feeling better now? Yeah, yeah, sort of, Dr. Cluzo, but, but you know... You know, as well as I do, at any time, like, you know, like a high energy solar flare, a high energy flow, have you ever heard of those? That could kill, murder us all. You know, like, it, a high energy solar flare could, like, cause major problems for, like, electricity and, and cause chaos and war. And also, an undetected asteroid could, like, you know, it, it could just wipe us out. You know, it's, I'm, you know, it's scary. I'm really scared of you know. And then, and of course, nearby gamma ray bursts, you know, like some, 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 some star not far away could like blow up suddenly and we all be dead. Huh? But, doc, Doc, you know, there's so many things that could kill us. I mean, it's like terrible, isn't it? And you're like, a, like, like I was always, always worried that like a volcano, you know, right here in Manhattan might suddenly pop up under, underneath me, underneath our building or underneath the whole of Manhattan and, and all of New York City could be like wiped out by a super volcano. Oh shit, Doc. I shouldn't think about these things. It just makes me so nervous and so scared. <sighs> We're all gonna die, Doc. At any time. Remember, you're special, Bob. Okay? And, 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 and special people, Bob, are less likely to die. Okay? For a long time. You're so good, Doc. You're so good at what you do. But I'm, you know, it doesn't matter what you do. You're gonna die someday, Doc. But, 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 why, why do we have to die, Doc? I mean, why can't we just live and live and live and live forever and ever and ever? I mean, why is the whole universe so evil, so cruel, Doc? Doctor Cluzo, you know, it's like so dark and so evil, so cold. And why are most people so stupid that they're not afraid of the danger of dying at any, any moment? Look, Bob, you know what my theory of death is, right? You know that people have had their fingers um, severed by an accident, you know, cut off. Oh, no, no, Bob, you're not going to have your finger cut off, I'm just saying. People have had their fingers cut off, right? And they've also had, some other people have had other parts of their body. And then they reattach them a few hours later. Now, the question I've always asked is, if, the, if that finger was touched by somebody, did the cells in that finger feel another person touching them? Did, 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 they, did, they, did they live? And did you feel what that cell experienced? Obviously, the cell in that finger that was detached from you, you, you wouldn't have felt it, right? Because it's, it's alive, but it's not connected to you. So my theory is that there is a soul in every cell in your body. Each one of them has its own soul. Yeah, and it's like a it's like a universe of souls nearby. You're not really alone, actually. This is my theory. 
I mean, it, it kind of makes sense, right? I mean, if every cell is itself a living organism, yeah, then it has its own soul. This is pretty logical to me. Something keeps it alive, right? And I, but also remember what I've explained to you. Fearing death itself can be excessive. And, and it can make you ill. And, and, and of course, if you're ill, it's not a good idea, Bob, right? Right. Perfectly normal to a point, but... But I also fear not having lived a full life, you know? A life of joys, pleasures, fun, happiness, sharing, and caring, love, love, Bob. A life full of love. Yeah, I know you're lonely, but, you know, we've discussed that. We're going to work on that next time, okay? So, so death is the enemy, Bob, right? Death is the enemy. We must avoid it as much as realistically possible, right? But, but when we get really, really old, like many years away in the future, we then simply feel like, you know, we're in need of being born into a fresh new body, you know. Life could be, you know, it could be, it could be different again. It can be, a, you could be born into an animal or another human being, anything. And Bob, 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 it's better to have a fresh new body than to live till we rot in constant pain and... Oh, I understand, Doc. I know, I know, I know. But, but will we, you know, you, Doc, we will never agree on this, Doc. Death is dangerous. I mean, it, it kills. It must be stopped. Death must be stopped. Other, otherwise, it will kill us all, Doc. I hate thinking about death. I hate the word death. In fact, I told you last time we had our possession. I told you I want to invent a new word, you know, something that you and I know means the same thing, but it's not the word death. It's like, I don't know if God exists, Doc. But if he does, he should, he should provide proof to everybody. Absolute proof that we never really, really cease to exist when our bodies and brains stop working. I mean, you know, if, if God exists, he should just let us be calm and know that we're not going to, you know, like, die, die. Like, it's not going to be over. It's like, death is not the end. So, anyway, I came up with a word um, that's my own. It's, um, dang, dang, I, I forgot what the word is, Dr. Cluzo. Ah, is, is forgetfulness a sign of that one is about to die, Doc? <laughs> right, I'm not going to die, right? Not now. And the slime, the slime was just plain, like, you know, slime. So it could be, like, just regular slime, right? No, no, no major disease, right? And the cavity woman, I mean, like, she didn't touch me or kiss me or anything, so, like, I don't think I'm going to get sick, right? <laughs> but, but the Doc, what if I die anyway? Until then, we must not worry too much about death, Bob. Because if we do, we get we get sick, right? And then that just puts us at greater risk of, of dying, right? So, Bob, are you gonna get? Are you gonna be able now to get some sleep? Because I need to sleep as well. Ah, am I gonna get be able to? Well, you know me, Doc. I, I'm afraid to fall asleep right away. I mean, it's like, you know, because they say people die in their sleep all the time. You know, people just fall asleep and then they don't wake up they die so you know what i do is i stay awake until i'm just so tired you know, like it's awesome and, and then i make sure before i fall asleep that my bedside um digital the vital science system is hooked up to me and it will it sounds an alarm if anything should happen that will wake me up right away and then i then i have my sleep time rabbit pet you know i have this very little rabbit in the apartment here and i take it out of its cage and i cuddle it I call my pet, oh, my pet, oh, you know that, right? okay, little Bobby, anyway, I put him in my hands, and then I, ah, and then eventually I fall asleep, duck, duck, thank you, you know, I'm feeling, I'm feeling better now, but, but can I, but can I call you directly if I have to, can I have your number to call you directly? All right, Bob, I'll text you my number, but, but please, try not to call, okay, unless it's important, okay? Oh, oh, no, Doc, I wouldn't do that. No, I'd, I'd rather punch the, 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 the death refugee than disturb your vacation, Doc. I appreciate that. Thank you, Bob. You just take that effigy and punch it and say, death to death. Good night, Bob. G good night, Doc. Uh, oh, oh, by the way, one, <clears throat> can one die accidentally from swallowing a fruit, fruit, fruit fly? Accidentally swallowing a fruit, fruit fly? I think I just saw, swallowed a fruit fly. Fruit fly? I very much doubt it, Bob. Not in New York City, may maybe in some tropical forest, but you know, the chances of a fruit fly making you sick, nah.
Okay, thanks, Doc, so much. You have a good night. I'll try not to call. Thank you, Doc. I need to make some tea. Soon I can go back to sleep. Now what? I'm sorry, Doc. I didn't mean to disturb you, but please don't be don't be angry at me, Dr. Cuso. But but have you seen have you seen the news on the on the TV, Doc? We're all gonna die. Just look back. I'm frightened, Doc. I'm too young to die, Doc. My vitals are, are going haywire. What's the news? I'm here. What what's what's going on? War. It's broken out in the Middle East. Doc, just, just turn on your TV if you have one and see for yourself if you do not believe me. It's terrible. We're all going to die, Doc. It's war in the Middle East. Bob, come on now. War has been going on in the Middle East since since I was born. Um, it's just, I told you, Bob, stop watching so much news. Watch something pleasant like, you know, some, you know, you told me about that movie you liked about those two ladies, you know what I'm talking about? What do you like? Yeah. What was it called? All right, Bob, I'll, 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 I'll turn on the TV. Let me see. I'll turn on the TV. Where is it? Let's put on the TV here. To summarize what we know so far, we're reporting the Pentagon is saying that they, that they estimate that over 80,000 Iranian troops have just crossed into Iraq. This was about an hour ago. With over 200 tanks and air support, and Israel has issued a, uh, Iran a warning. It says that unless Iran uh, pulls back immediately, uh, Israel will launch. This is, again, what we reported just uh, 30 minutes ago. Yes, Israel Bob, is really bad, a Bob. strike on Iran. And well, I mean, so we're getting it can happen, some Bob. News I, reports right I, I now do not know what to tell you, Bob. Uh, now you know me. Correspondent, I told you when uh, we had our very first session, I will never lie Mike? to you. That looks pretty. Yes, um, I mean, I'm sure. I don't think so. Also I think they'll attempt to stop this. I mean, tanks, somehow they'll come to their senses, tanks, Bob. I as think well as so. significant air support, yeah. um, fighter planes. Hold on, there's some breaking news from the Iranian Bob, side. Uh, listen, you know what? Uh, he's a veteran into Iraqi airspace. I know, Bob. 
Japan. Oh, call you back. The, uh, soon as I watch the news yeah. cover with Air Now, I'll tell you what I think. Now, Israel has just I issued mean, a sounds really warning bad. for Iran. It doesn't necessarily mean that we've had, had this right now. It could be that the reports are based on the false information about Jerusalem. Or Seattle, maybe who wants to die in a world war. Russia will handle okay, the Bob, situation. Listen, let me watch the news. Um, oh, yeah. Meanwhile, the Iraqi listen, Kurdish listen. leadership hmm. um, reports that two major Iranian battalions are heading towards Real Iraq. The world is going crazy directly, out there. And that the Kurdish regional government is now asking for help from the international community. What's wrong with these people? And uh, also, we're reporting now that the uh, European Union, France and Germany in specific, have um, basically I said tell Bob, that they would like really all bad. the parties to cease all hostilities I mean, immediately God. and no further. Further oh, threats or advances this. should be made. This, uh, this is France. Uh, France itself has said that it has the ability to deter <sighs> a world war like, if necessary. Instead of being a psychologist, and, uh, Germany, though it doesn't have that ability, has stars, also stated that it can affect the whole world in such this ways that we cannot good. summarize what we know so far. We're reporting the Pentagon is saying what they, that they estimate that over 80,000 Iranian troops have just crossed into Iraq. This was about an hour ago. With over 200 tanks and air support, and Israel has issued a uh, Iran a warning. It says that unless Iran uh, pulls back immediately, uh, Israel will launch. This is uh, again what we reported just uh, 30 minutes ago. Israel is threatening to launch a preemptive strike on Iran. And so we're getting back uh, some news reports right now from Jerusalem, and now to our correspondent uh, Mike Staverkel. Mike. Yes, um, Peter. Um, the Pentagon is saying that they estimate that over 80,000 Iranian troops have just crossed into Iraq. That's 80,000. And the Pentagon says that also they detected around 200 tanks, an estimated 200 tanks, as well as uh, significant air support, um, fighter planes as well as helicopters from the Iranian side. Uh, these have entered into Iraqi airspace and uh, uh, we're also we're reporting now that the uh, European Union, France and Germany in specific, have um, basically said that they would like all the parties to cease all hostilities immediately and no further, further threats or advances should be made. Uh, this is France. Uh, France itself has said that it has the ability to deter a world war if necessary. And also from the Vatican, uh, Pope, uh, the Pope has said that uh, basically we need to have world peace and that the only way we can stop these dangerous situations from happening is if we have a change in the attitude of world leaders and that we have to have world peace as soon as possible. The Pope has said that everybody should stop all hostilities because peace is the only way to secure everybody's rights in this world. Um, actually, it's, here's, here's a report from Tehran right now from Iran. Uh, they claim that uh, uh, the reason they've done this is because Israel sank an Iranian submarine in the Bermuda Triangle. Unbelievable stuff here. They're actually accusing a small country. And, uh, of course, the Israelis are now saying, in response to the Iranian allegation, that they sank a submarine, uh, an Iranian submarine, in the Bermuda Triangle. They're saying the Israeli Defense Department here is denying that it ever sank any Iranian submarine, saying that Iran is lying and it's just using this as an excuse to basically uh, try to destroy it. Well, wouldn't you have to know it? Uh, Tehran has just issued a response to the Israeli response in which Israel has denied that it sank a submarine anywhere, an Iranian submarine anywhere, and especially not in the Bermuda Triangle, and that it's Israel who's lying. And in fact, the quote unquote, the uh, uh, Iranian uh, government said Israel is liar, liar, pants on fire. Israel is liar, liar, pants on fire. Reporting from... And uh, now out of Moscow, just the latest news in this whole mega crisis in the Middle East. Russia, Moscow is saying that if Iran is attacked, Russia will obliterate Tasmania. As we reported a few minutes ago, the Russian government has claimed that has suggested that Tasmania is behind the whole situation and that if Iran were attacked uh, by the uh, Israelis in the United States that they would then attack Tasmania. Uh, well, we just got a response from the Tasmanian government, totally shocked. Um, they said, here, this is their official word. They said, here, this is their official words. Uh, what did we ever do to Russia? What? Well, you know, 
this is getting more absurd by the minute, at the same time scarier. E even right now as we are reporting that Israel has already launched a whole fleet of um, um, interceptors and uh, fighter craft and who knows what else. Now the Russians are saying that it was just joking about Tasmania. And in response, the Tasmanians now have said that the Russian joke is not funny. Quote unquote, Tasmania's government says the Russian joke is not funny, especially at a time uh, when the world could be facing um, total, total disaster. Uh, out of Washington, we're getting a report that the U.S. president has said that Iran must get out of, quote unquote, the Middle East. And never mind the fact that Iran is in the Middle East. Anyway, it's uh, once more repeating this. Uh, we're having reports now that the President of the United States has told Iran that it must get out of the Middle East or else. Uh, out of what? Well, we have some very interesting development right now. It looks like some good news. Um, we were just hearing now reports that the, uh, uh, all the major governments in the Middle East can officially now state that the Iranian forces, as they see them on their monitors, are returning back to Iran. They're returning home. And uh, an Iranian general appears uh, to have been responsible for this. He's been arrested and declared insane by the government in Tehran. So it looks like um, everything is going to calm down now. But this was, this was really, really a scary one. Uh, this is World News uh, Network reporting. Um, but of course, we'll keep you updated if anything changes again. At the present time, to repeat the latest uh, news, uh, the Iranian forces have... Uh, begun to return back to Iran. They've made a U-turn. Um, yes, there were some casualties. Uh, we don't know yet know exactly the details, but it's all relatively... Bob! They're Is here. They? Who are they? Aliens. Bob, UFOs. Please. Flying saucers. I'm exhausted. They're here. Please, Bob. We're gonna live forever. I, okay, Bob. We have a good night, Bob. Oh, God. Aliens? UFOs? God, this guy's got nuts. It must have all been too much for him. Oh, this is terrible. This is just terrible. Now I'm going to lose my practice and everything's going to sue the hell out of me, this rich kid. <sighs> what is that noise? What is that? What's that up there? They're here. 